Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through step by step how I draw a realistic looking face in charcoal. Just before we start, I do wanna say a big thank you to today's sponsor, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video and I will be talking to you guys more about them in a couple of minutes. I don't use too many different materials for my portrait drawings. I just use a couple of different charcoal or carbon pencils with different grades, normally like a 4B and then something like a H or a HB. I like to also use a blending stump and a paintbrush for my blending tools. And for highlights, I like to use a Tombow Mono Eraser and this is a stick eraser and it's great for those precise details. Another great tool for blending large areas is some tissue. And finally for paper, I like to use a hot pressed watercolor paper for my charcoal portrait drawings. So now that we've covered the materials, let's get straight into step one, and that is blocking in the shadows. And this is the thing that I like to do first. I like to take my darker charcoal pencil, a 4B or a 6B, and block in the darkest values on the face. You can see that I've already got my sketch outline drawn out. And for you guys that wanna learn how I got an accurate sketch outline, I have got a separate video for that, which I'll link in a card up above. So you can see that I'm starting off with the eyes and I do tend to start off with the eyes first, but you can choose wherever on the face you want to start, it's up to you. For the eyes, the darkest parts tend to be the pupils, also the upper creases for the eyelid and the eyebrows. And so you can see that I'm just lightly going in with that charcoal pencil and just blocking in all of these areas. And you may be thinking, why am I blocking in the darkest areas first? I've found that if you block in the darkest values first, it helps you to judge all of the other values, the midtones and the highlights, because often if you do the shadows last, you'll add in all of your dark values and then realize that you haven't gone dark enough everywhere else. So just study your reference image to find out where the darkest parts of your portrait are. For this one, it was the nostrils, the inside of the mouth, and also the side of the hair as well. And now before we move on to the next step, I wanna talk to you guys about our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of really great classes in so many different areas, including art, photography, video editing, even business skills, which as you guys know, I say business skills are so important for artists to learn. With the premium membership, you get unlimited access to all of these classes. The annual subscription is less than $10 a month, so you're getting such great value with that price. But what's even better is Skillshare is giving the first 500 of you that sign up two months completely free for Skillshare. So you can go and watch all of those classes and see for yourself how great it really is. So the link for that will be at the top of the description so you can go and get two months free. Okay, so now that we've blocked in the darkest shadows, it's time to move on to step two, which is adding in all of the midtones. Now for this, I am using the lighter carbon pencil. This is a H grade, but you can use a HB if you want to. And I'm using this and I'm using the side of the pencil to basically just shade in all of the slightly lighter values. So the shadows and the midtones. I'm not using this to shade in any of the highlights though. You can see that I'm starting off by contouring the nose. So I'm adding the shading on either side of the nose and also on the side of the face. So at this point, you really just wanna assess and analyze your reference and sort of pick out all of the darkest shadows. I'm also sh adding shadow just under the nose and above the eyes, between the eye and the eyebrow. And I'm contouring the side of the forehead as well. You can see that I am leaving areas completely white and these are where the highlights are going to be. So do the same, don't shade in any of your highlights. Also, you can build up more layers of your carbon pencil on the darker areas by going in different directions, but I do recommend not pressing hard with your pencil. Instead of applying more pressure, just add more layers by going in different directions because when we go to blend this out, if you press too hard on your pencil, then it's gonna be really hard to get rid of those pencil strokes. At the end of the day, we want our skin to look nice and smooth and we don't wanna see all of our pencil strokes. So the lighter you press on your pencil, the easier they are to get rid of. I'm also adding a layer of shading to the top and bottom lips. And you can see that I'm also adding a few little creases that curve with the shape of the lips to create texture as well. I'm also adding a layer of shading to the iris. 
Watch out for any highlights within the eye as well because they are normally very, very bright and you'll want to try and preserve them rather than shading over them with charcoal. I'm adding multiple layers over by the shadows on the side of the nose and I'm also outlining the jaw and the chin as well. Finishing off by doing the same thing with the other eye. And once you think you've added all your midtones, make sure that you keep looking at your reference to see if you need to go darker anywhere else. But remember, we will be working in multiple layers, so don't worry if you don't get it dark enough straight away. But now let's move on to step three, which is blending out all of this shading. So for the skin, I like to use tissue and also a paintbrush. So I'm starting off by going in with my paintbrush. You can use any sort of brush that you want. The fluffy ones tend to work better for this. So something like a round brush. And I'm going in just in circular motions and just as you can see, blending out all of these carbon and charcoal lines. Now the paintbrush does a good job at blending it out and adding a base layer and a base tone to all of the white areas, but it won't completely remove all of the graininess and all of the pencil strokes. And so that is why I really love using the tissue as well, because that does a really good job at smoothing everything out. I'm being very careful as I blend out the smaller details, for example, the eyes, but I am blending out everywhere and I am blending some of that excess powder onto the lighter areas so that they're no longer bright white. And then finishing off by going over it with some of my tissue. Like I said, the tissue works great at getting rid of those pencil strokes. It really does remove all of the graininess to give a really nice smooth finish. And as you can see, we've got a much better base layer which we can now go and build on top of. And that brings us on to step four, which is add more shading. So go in with the pencils that you were using before, the two pencils, and build up more layers on anywhere that you need to darken up. So normally when you blend out, your shadows become a bit lighter. So when you blend with the tissue or the paintbrush, it can lighten up that shading. So this is the step where you wanna really make sure that your values are dark enough. So you can see that I'm building up more layers on the sides of the nose and blending them out straight away with the brush. And then you can judge whether you need to add another layer. I also need to darken up the side of the face. And you also are using these pencils to crispen up any edges as well, because when you blend out, you can make some edges look fuzzy that need to be very clean and sharp. I'm also taking that more lighter charcoal pencil, that H pencil for the lighter areas as well. And just keep building up more and more layers. I'm darkening up the mouth now by the teeth and using the paintbrush to make sure that I have no graininess. You can also use a blending stump if you want to blend out more detailed area because the paintbrush is sometimes too big to blend out tiny details. I also darkened up the pupil and I'm going back and I'm just darkening up the edge of the face as well where it meets the hair. Adding a few little hairs going over onto the forehead. And now that we've done that, it's time for step five, which is adding the highlights and the final details. I think this is my favorite part because I find that adding the highlights really starts to help the drawing pop because it's given it more contrast and contrast is so important if you want your drawing to pop. You can see that I'm going in and I'm brightening up all of the lightest parts of the portrait. So for example, the highlights within the eyes, the center of the nose, any highlights on the lips. So especially if the person is wearing lip gloss or something, there's gonna be a very shiny look and a wet look to the lips. I'm also adding a bit of highlight above the mouth and to the sides. And like I was saying, contrast is so important. You need to get your shadows as dark as they need to be, and then you need to get the highlights as bright as they need to be. I'm also cleaning up the edge of the face using this eraser to lighten up by the chin and that jawline. You can see that I'm going in circular motions with my eraser to help give really smooth shading still. You don't want it to look like eraser lines, and I'm being very, very light because if you want a really bright highlight, then you will need to apply more pressure to the eraser, but if you just want it to be a very subtle highlight, then use a lot less pressure. 
And then once you've added in all of your highlights, it's time to go on and finish up all of the details. So to this point, we were just sort of adding the values and making sure everything was dark enough. But you want to go in and make sure you're adding the fine little eyebrow hairs and also the eyelashes and stuff like that. And it's always great to leave these to the end because if you blend over these areas it would just smudge out. So it's best to add these once you've done all of your blending and you're happy with how everything is looking. You want to keep your pencils nice and sharp for this step as well. So you can see that I'm just going in with my lighter carbon pencil and just adding in the eyelashes and the eyebrow hairs. And this really helps to finish off the portrait and make it look a lot more finished. You can then go over with the darker pencil for the root of the eyelashes to darken them up. And you can see it just really helps to finish off the eyes. You can also go in and add details in the lips, especially if you're drawing an older person or a man, they might have more texture to the lips. And if you're drawing an older person, they might have more texture to the skin as well. So I'm just darkening up around the teeth and you can see that I've added a bit more of the shadow for the hair to the right hand side of the face as well. But anyway guys, that is it for this tutorial. If you want to see the full real-time version of this with the hair and the background, then that is available over on my Patreon, as well as over 300 other real-time tutorials for charcoal, watercolors, and even color pencils as well. I've got loads of tutorials available on there, all in real time, all with voiceover, so you can follow me along every step of the way. I provide the sketch outlines, the references, and the materials list, so you really can follow along with me. When you become a patron, you get access to all of the tutorials that I've ever uploaded over a year's worth for just a small amount per month, as well as new tutorials that I upload monthly. But this is the finished portrait. I really hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here. And even tick that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.